So I want to share <clears throat> a scripture that Phil Robertson, I saw him share last night. And it's in Ecclesiastes 10. And I've actually found out that the Ecclesiastes 10 is a really good book, a chapter. I figured I'd read that chapter anyway. But I was watching, he's the guy from Duck Dynasty. And um, he was uh, saying that at the beginning of Ecclesiastes 10 shows that the people who are uh, wise are on the right side and the people who are fools are on the left side. And that's your Republicans or Democrats or far right, far left, whatever. Um, it was just funny how he presented it, but I'm going to share those scriptures. But I'm going to read the whole chapter. There's a lot, actually a lot of really good stuff in here. And it kind of reads like Proverbs. Uh, dead, but, dead flies putrefy of the perfumer's ointment and cause it to give off a foul odor. So does a little folly to one respected for wisdom and honor. So he's talking about watching our walk and watching how we interact and keep things simple. You start complicating things, then people start looking down on you. A wise man's heart is at his right hand, but a fool's heart at his left. Depending on the, uh, uh, depending on the uh, type of Bible that you're using, um, it, it says it much more like it's you know far right or far left. It was, just, it was funny to watch the video. Even when a fool walks along the way, he lacks wisdom, and he shows everyone that he is a fool. If the spirit of the ruler rises against you, do not leave your post, for conciliation pacifies great offenses. There is an evil I have seen under the sun, as an error proceeding from the ruler. Folly is set in great dignity, while the rich sit in a lowly place. It's very interesting to read, and as I'm reading, I read a little bit last night, but as I'm reading, I'm seeing what he's talking about here. And when you read, almost verse 6 is just one of them. It says, Folly is set in great dignity, while the rich sit in the lowly place. Why are the rich sitting in a lowly place? Well, who are actually the rich of the earth? It's not those that are rich. It's not those that are up in the limelight. It's all of us down here who have Christ, who put our trust in Christ. We're the ones that are rich. We just don't have the riches here. They're waiting for us in heaven. And all that folly, like all the Hollywood and all the movie stars, all the nonsense that they're involved in, and look where they're at. Folly is set in great dignity. And verse 7 is the same thing. I have seen servants on horses while princes walk on the ground like servants. That's It's talking about those who have put themselves up in this high position, but there are those who are down here that are actually the ones that are in the high position. It's just our time hasn't come yet. He who digs a pit will fall into it, and whoever breaks through a wall will be bitten by a serpent. He who quarries stones may be hurt by them, and he who splits wood may be endangered by it. Now there's a lot more hidden knowledge hidden here. I'm just not getting it yet. If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. So let's talk, I think that's talking about being bullheaded. A serpent may bite when it is not charmed. The babbler is no different. And he's talking about your conversation. So, depending on how you tailor your conversation, you could get a negative response or a positive response. The words of a wise man's mouth are gracious, but the lips of a fool shall swallow him up. So he's talking about your own words can destroy you. The words of his mouth begin with foolishness, and the end of his talk is raving madness. And I see that. Um, conversations I have on here, they'll start out pretty good, um, but it's what they're talking about is, is an error as far as the, how the Bible or the end times. But then the more they talk and the more they go, the, their true colors come out and their true agenda comes out. And then it does, it makes no sense. A fool has multiple, a fool also multiplies words. No man knows what is to be. Who can tell him what will be after him? Um, I see this in a lot of people's comments. They think they must make this huge, long post. And when I make my point, it's a couple of sentences, sometimes, sometimes a paragraph. But most of the time, it's just a few sentences, and I can make my point very clearly. But they think if they should share all this stuff, that it's going to make a difference, and it doesn't. I had a conversation with a guy that went on so long, and he typed so much. I finally told him, I was like, look, you obviously have need to go talk to somebody. Because if you're spending all this time typing this much, thinking you're making a point, 
And even one time, he did a seven paragraphs, big paragraphs, in the, in the comment. It took me almost an hour to read it all. And I told him, you know, you could have said all that in three sentences. And I gave him the three sentences. And he didn't want to talk anymore. It's like, you're, you're saying all this stuff like you're sounding important, but you're not. Because you put so much extra junk in there, it doesn't make any sense. And it's people just trying to sound smart and sound important. A lot of them will use a lot of big words. Uh, okay, well, you're not impressing me or making me look bad because if I don't know what the word means, I can just go look it up. It's not that, not rocket science. The labor of fools wearies them, for they do not even know how to go to the city. That's the truth. Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child and your princes feast in the morning. Some of these, I'm not getting anything on them. They mean something, but I haven't gotten it. Woe to you, O land, when your king is a child, and your king is childish when he doesn't know what he's doing, and your princes feast in the morning. Feast in the morning, don't do anything the rest of the day. Blessed are you, O land, when your king is the son of nobles, and your princes feast at the proper time for strength and not for drunkenness. That makes sense. Because of laziness, the building decays, and through idleness of hands, the house leaks. Being lazy, not repairing everything. A feast is made for laughter, and wine makes merry, but money answers everything. Mm. Do not curse the king, even in your thought. Do not curse the rich, even in your bedroom. For a bird of the air may carry your voice. And a bird in flight may tell the matter. So he's talking about the walls have ears. So it's cool to read a lot of this stuff because a lot of this stuff likens to things that we see nowadays. And um, I didn't get anything on some of them. But there again, it, like the last video I did, it, it's all about your life experience. Um, your life experience helps you understand a lot of this stuff because it applies. And some of those things you've heard before. So it's pretty cool. I, I love the Bible. I love how it's laid out. It... Uh, it points to a lot. Sometimes it's very simple things, but it has the most profound understanding, and uh, it can make it can make your walk so much better. Just taking the time to read those little books like that that we don't normally pay attention to. Love you guys. Bless y'all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.